Hi everyone, it's Jerry. If you've been playing chess long enough, you've likely come across an opponent use the hippopotamus defense against you. For those who don't know what I'm referring to, it involves these same 10 moves in some order. Six pawn advances, both bishops being fianchettoed, and both knights being deployed to the squares in front of the king and queen. It has certain symmetry to it, there's an aesthetic appeal, and it's a setup that is easy to remember. And maybe for that reason, or those reasons, uh, that's why it's so commonly seen. Uh, if you're not careful with the setup you choose against it, you can easily find yourself in a position where you try to open it up only to have that backfire, only to have your opponent reply and closed, close the center. And this is exactly what someone who is playing the hippopotamus defense wants. They want the position to close in the center and then be in a perfect position to strike on the flanks with these bishop pawn advances. In, in Black's case, the moves c5 or f5, depending on how exactly the center closed up. Now, what I'm going to show you is, first, a setup that is not effective. We'll see why exactly that is the case in order to better understanding of this opening. And then I will, of course, suggest a setup that will be effective, one that will, by force, open up the position to our benefit, to the benefit of our better positioned pieces. So, again, this first setup I'm showing is one that may look appealing, but it's just not going to be effective against the hippopotamus defense. Everything seems quite well and good. White has this ideal pawn center, everything directed towards the center of the board, the rooks right here in the center. The only thing lacking is what? Well, the position hasn't opened up. And is there a way to force the opening up of the position? Unfortunately, not really. I mean, what, what are you going to do here? a4, let's say king f8. You can't castle, by the way, because you'd be dropping h6. a5, the first attempt at maybe trying to exchange pawns. Now that's shot right down, b5. If you're taking, the position opens up, the rook can come back over and at least finally have a target. But a5 is met with b5, it's closed. Let's look at the central pushes. d5. I'm sorry, d5, e5, the center's closed, black's in a position to eventually play f5. All right, let's try something else, e5, no, that's that's probably even the, oh, the worst one. Bishop takes knight, wrecked pawn structure, and then d5 with tempo, the bishop runs away scared, and then in comes c5. What we're seeing here is, again, any attempt by white to try and open the position is simply shot down. Position remains closed, and who's in a better position black, right? Especially with this nice home on f5. Okay, well again, what I'm going to recommend, of course, is something a little bit different, one that will be effective, okay? Now, my suggestion is to first play the move d4, bishop uh, b6, bishop to b7, and now knight to c3. Okay, we want our c pawn working. This is one of the main differences between that initial setup I showed and the one I'm suggesting right now. What we ultimately want is to have three pawns, not two, contributing with our setup. And I'd like to draw your attention to the move order here because if you think you could just throw up these three pawns in any order, well, there could be some problems. If you're throwing the E pawn first, and black is going with the quick queenside fianchetto of their first 10 moves, D4, bishop B7, this pawn is hit, how do we defend it? Knight here, we don't want to obstruct our C pawn. We also don't want our bishop on D3, he's better on E2, I'll touch on that in a little bit. So, my main point here is to first go with D4, in the event black is in fact going with the queenside fianchetto, c4, knight c3. These three moves first, and only then e4. Okay, so black carries on. We get our knights. These are still the same positions from that initial setup, but again, the main point is that we have our c pawn working. e6, bishop to e2. He's going to be better positioned on e2. Instead of d3, 
On d3, we'll see in a little bit, he will be accessible to a knight jump to c5. We want to sidestep that, so it's bishop e2, castles, bishop to e3. We're stacking our bishops on the same file as, uh, or we're stacking our bishops on the king's file. And we also want to keep a close eye on c5. We'll see why exactly that's a good idea soon enough. Knight d7, queen c2. This is a quite common move to see to line this type of idea up to have a battery towards h6, but I'm going to recommend queen to c2. We want to keep the d2 square available for a knight to move there and also avoid the possibility of our bishop one day being trapped. This can happen if our queen is on d2. I will again touch on all of these points, just giving a quick summary for right now. Black castles, rook a to d1, these are the first 10 moves that I'm suggesting. Three pawns, both knights like so, bishop stacked on the king file, our queen rook opposite the black queen. Okay, um, if black, instead of going with their normal routine, and I will just touch on this very quickly because it just goes... Uh, completely away from the main idea with black setup. Again, black's main idea is to keep the position closed, so any attempts at trying to break in the center, you can rule this out more tactically vulnerable, better positioned pieces. This is only benefiting white. These types of moves with the rooks coming in here, doubling already. You could forget about black trying something crazy like c5, in other words. You could rule this out. You could rule e5 out. We're just capturing a bunch of times. You could even break further with c5, exploiting this pin. That's not working out so well, of course. White is the preferred side there. And if d5, we can play bishop d3. Now that this move is in, we will at any moment have the position open up. It will it will happen if we're playing if d5 is in. If black is then shifting gears and playing h6, we could get our other rook involved. a6, we could even throw in a move like h3, preparing for a flight square one day. And then at the appropriate moment, we could just smash away at d5, maybe even play bishop f4, knight to e5, maybe gain a tempo against h6 one day. You get the idea. The position will open up with any of these few attempts on the black side. c5, d5, e5, even f5, we'd be doing what? If f5 is played, well, this is worst of all, knight g5. What are you doing about your e6 pawn? Okay, so you're not going to see these moves. If they are played, you're just benefiting. Suppose h6, black goes on their merry way with the same setup. This is the plan. This is the setup right here. These are the 10 moves. This is the follow-up plan I'm suggesting. d5, okay? The middle pawn gets advanced, the one that we have the most support for, and it's now engaging with e6. The most common reply and best reply is e5, and we're going to see what we could do in response to that. If for some reason black is capturing, this is only helpful to us. Opens up this diagonal, opens up this file, and again, we are benefiting. We could even think about knight d4 into c6 or e6 should the move f5 be played this is just not a good idea for black to be capturing and so what's maybe best of course is e5 okay one thing i would like to emphasize here is a particular reason behind playing our rook on a to d1 prior to this d5 advance i've been uh staring at this uh setup. I've been trying to come up with a, a good setup for a while and I was running with this d5 move and there's some issues with still having a rook on a1 that I wanted to avoid. You'll notice if instead of making this 10th move rook a to d1, if you play d5 before this rook is on d1, this, this move right here could turn out to be a little bit annoying. Knight c5. And the short summary here is that whenever the knight arrives on c5, we want to be really, really quick to kick him out of there. So knight c5, we really want to play b4 and just kick him away. But unfortunately, 
there's now bishop takes knight, and if we're taking the bishop, we're dropping e4. But you'll notice, well, let me also point out, after b4, bishop takes knight, the bishop is on our rook, okay? But if we are first having the rook here, and they go with h6, d5, now the move knight c5, we can play b4. And if bishop takes knight, he's just taking a piece without tempo on our rook, which means we don't have to take the bishop. Again, taking the bishop would allow this. But instead, we could take the knight. The bishop has to run away. We could take the position, have it open up, take the position, take the pawn, have it open up again, and now strike at a weak point e6, and maybe even strike further with bishop to g4. Okay, I just want to show you a, an important detail that I came across when trying when preparing for a video like this, when suggesting uh, this setup, I found that it's better to have the rook first positioned on d1 prior to the d5 advance. So, okay, let's move forward with it. d5 it is, e5 is there, the center's closed, but you'll notice this c pawn is not on his home square. With this center now closed and staggered in the following way, we want to now get this as our next pawn break in. We want to play on the queen side. Okay, after e5, this is the next idea we want to get in. b4 with c5. But we want to address one particular move that black has. Okay, black is now in a position to play f5. We want to address this idea. The move here is knight to d2. And now after f5, f3, this is the primary function of the knight d2 move. To allow our f pawn to advance, to reinforce our center in anticipation of f5. In the event of captures, we're recapturing with the pawn. Okay? This is the primary reason behind knight to d2. The secondary reason will be revealed only several moves later. When we get in the c5 advance, this is going to be uh, a nice post for our knight. So it's not just there to free up our f pawn, but one day he is going to arrive on c4 where he will exert a ton of pressure on the black position. Okay, so knight to d2 is the move right now. Let me also emphasize something else. Again, of those 10 moves uh, that black could be playing, suppose this is not one of them. Suppose instead of h6, I want you to draw your attention to some details here so you're not just blindly playing moves without thought and, and memorizing, in other words. I want you to have, or at least try to have some understanding of the reasoning behind these moves that are being played and some of the subtleties here. Suppose a6 is played instead of h6. Okay, after d5, e5, we don't play knight to d2 because f5 is not a threat. If this is the case, that a6 is played and not h6, or maybe better stated, if the g5 square is not guarded by the pawn, we do not move the knight. This is not yet a threat. So we get on with our plan, which at this point is to play c5. Initially, it's to play d5. We have that in. Now that it has been closed, this is the next pawn break we look to get in. This is where we want to break. This is where we want to open the position. This is where we should play, on the queen side of the board. You'll notice, why is this so bad? f5? Because of knight g5. And then knight to e6. Black is in a very bad position. Uh, the computer is reading as as uh, evaluation close to plus two, just to give you an idea. Now, I want to also draw your attention to the position of the queen. You'll notice if at the moment right here you could visualize the queen on this d2 square instead of c2. If she's on the d2 square, knight g5 can be met with f4, and you'll notice in this situation, the bishop would turn out to be what? Trapped. This is one of the ideas behind deploying the queen to the c2 square, to not allow this f5 move to come with the threat of one day trapping our bishop. 
okay so my main point here is that if in these situations right here if a6 is played instead of h6 d5 e5 this is not a threat until g5 is defended with the pawn so keep him there until this square is guarded and this is in fact a threat okay but as it played out in this one we're going with h6 d5 e5 now this is on g5 is defended knight d2 we make one defensive move f5 we reinforce our center it might close up we simply drop back and what is black to do a5 we're not going to be stopped a3 we want to get in b4 and then c5 it's a race and who's going to win it white b4 takes takes what's black to do keep pushing we could play c5 black has how many pieces on that knight two pawns and we have one two are we able to play that yes we're still able to play it it's tactically there after this c5 advance black can take once on this square if they take a second time they're dead on the spot what am i talking about d takes e queen to b3 remember this move queen to b3 hits the bishop and sets up a deadly discovered attack d6 winning the knight black is busted suppose knight takes pretty much the same first we take out the knight queen to b3 same story bishop d6 is there one thing to be aware of if queen to d6 don't grab the bishop because black is now the better side with uh, being up now upon so the way you fix that of course is to not take the bishop and instead make use of that secondary idea when we played knight to d2 knight c4 and this is going to be brutal for black queen d7 here comes d6 discover checks you can maybe even take the bishop instead you get the idea the queen d6 is simply not a defense knight c4 crushes this black's position so uh, if black is trying to do something other than this race here getting in their pawn break with g4 for example at this point instead of h5 maybe maybe black is aware of <clears throat> excuse me maybe black is aware of this tactic and gets the king out of the way we move forward still with the break we could have a couple captures and I'm not even sure what to recommend here as soon as there's uh, this square no longer controlled by a black pawn for example if pawn takes we could play knight to a4 this pawn will be scooped up we could even consider maybe knight to b3 we're playing on the queen side we have officially opened up the position to our benefit knight takes there's bishop takes pawn takes knight to a4 he's grabbing this pawn and then he's ready to land right into the heart of the black position a knight on e6 is just invaluable uh, so hopefully you're getting the idea here we are uh, getting this c5 break in we are breaking the position open to our benefit i'm not sure what other resistance there could be on the black side as an example if still running with h5 c5 takes takes do know also we're threatening a fork this is coming with great effect black in many of these cases is having to react to the threats we're throwing on the queen side of the board if the knight runs away there can be rook to a1 we now come back over to invade over here on the queen side and well what is black to do here let's say g4 we could trade rooks we could also think about queen to b2 striking at the bishop just all the pieces are coming to life here um, if g takes we could just recapture with the knight rook to b8 well that's not going to be a good move because of pawn takes and then bishop to h7 bishop to a7 ideas if you're trading rooks we're just recapturing here looking to invade on the seventh rank moves like knight to b5 putting pressure on this structure you get the idea the position is opening up to our benefit if you're curious about a computer evaluation at this at this very moment here 
it's close to plus three, just to give you an idea. Balanced material, but it's reading as plus three. This is big, big trouble for Team Black. So these are the main ideas I wanted to emphasize to know that after, well, firstly, to know that we want to have this setup here, these 10 moves in, the queen rook on the D file, and then our plan is to play D5 to make sure we have a good reply after F5, if it is in fact a threat and f4 we back up this is the next pawn break to get in okay a5 that is this is just not stopping us we play a3 and we're just going to be faster that's how this is uh turning out here um so i hope you can uh play around with this and get a better feel for the pieces um the c5 break the plan the d5 push early on setting up this eventual c5 advance and knight one day could even, in some variations, be jumping into c4. The position, again, in short, is opening up to white's benefit. And I hope, that, I hope this is helpful to you when combating the hippopotamus defense. So uh, that's all for now. I hope you got something out of it. Take care. Bye. The main focus, however, of this video is this position right here, where we don't have the best reply, but instead one where white is looking to finally crash through on f7 by playing d6.